In today's video, I'm gonna show you the best hip exercise, the hip airplane. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my favorite hip exercise called the hip airplane. Now, the reason it's so great is because there's two different things that it can help you with, mobility and stability. Now, let's first talk about the emphasis of mobility. Darren, can you perform a squat for me? Now, whenever we're performing a strength movement, like a squat, a deadlift, a clean, or snatch, we wanna see as symmetrical mobility with our lower body as possible. Now, in certain sports like baseball, golf, hockey, it's common and sometimes normal and needed to have certain levels of asymmetries in mobility for that sport. But in the context of lifting, if I have a lot of internal rotation on one side and not a lot on the other, or a lot of external rotation on one side and not a lot on the other, it can lead to problems like hip shifts and uh, twisting and things like that. So it can lead to inefficiencies in technique. So for those reasons, we wanna have as symmetrical of mobility within our lower body as possible when in the context of strength sports. So let's talk about how to find if you have a limitation in mobility and then what you can do about it. So let's come right up here. Darren, I'm gonna have you on your back all the way down right here. This is how you screen for hip internal rotation differences. You're gonna take the hip up to about 60 degrees. So we don't need to come all the way up, up to just about 60 degrees. And for right here, you're going to hold onto the leg, make sure that it doesn't move, and you're going to slowly bring the foot out to the side. Now what I'm looking for is making sure that the pelvis doesn't twist up on that side. So keep the pelvis flat. Just go as far out to the side as you can. And we're gonna see how much mobility. This is hip internal rotation. Now again, the idea is we're looking for symmetry. Not necessarily do we have a lot on both sides or a little on both sides, but do I have a lot on one side and a little on the other side? What is the difference? So from right here, again, we're at 60 degrees and we're gonna go out to the side. You can see here, Darren has pretty symmetrical mobility, but if I got here and only did a little bit of motion, obviously that would be a pretty significant difference in hip internal rotation. Something like that is going to potentially be a big problem in creating efficient technique when lifting. So that is hip internal rotation. Here's our next test. I'm gonna go on to this side again. And actually, if we can come around to the front, this is what uh, we're gonna do for hip external rotation. So this is the Faber test, which is going to look at hip external rotation and extension differences side to side. I'm gonna take his foot and put his heel on the top of his knee. I'm gonna keep his pelvis level so that his pelvis doesn't twist up. And from right here, I'm gonna let him just relax his hip all the way down. Now my cue for him is to imagine that his tailbone, his sacrum stays flat on the bed. So he himself is gonna have some internal cues to make sure that he doesn't twist out to the side and give us a bad reading on this. So his pelvis stays flat, he's going to drop down. And what I'm looking for is how far does that knee drop down? I don't have him try to pull it down. I'm just having him just drop relaxing out to the side. So you can see right here how far we are. Now again, we're looking for side to side differences. So I'm gonna have him put his foot up here, keep his pelvis flat and drop down out to the side. And again, we're pretty similar, maybe a little bit higher on this side, but not too big of a difference. Again, we're looking for those side to side big asymmetries. And a lot of times what I've found in my experience is that athletes who have a big difference in hip uh, external rotation and extension with the Faber test, often they will shift towards that side. So they will shift into the restriction if they're having a problem in the bottom of a squat, clean or snatch, shifting side to side. Usually the Faber test can expose that problem um, side to side. But let's talk about now, if you found a difference in mobility side to side, significant, what do you do about it? And what part of the hip airplane can be the best for you? Let's jump on up. So I'm gonna have Darren on his left leg for this example. So in this position to start with the hip airplane. So this is the assisted version of the hip airplane. The assisted version of the hip airplane is there to help us improve mobility and flexibility. It starts off like a single leg RDL, back leg is straight, front leg or uh, stance leg is slightly bent. If you had a difference in hip internal rotation side to side, 
with our testing, the emphasis is gonna be on dropping the pelvis. So he's going to drop down. In this position, he's gonna bring out a really good stretch in his glute. If you do not feel a good stretch in the glute, you can try shifting your weight a little bit differently. Sometimes shifting your weight back onto your heel can help. But the cue is I want him to take his belly button and try to twist it towards me. And in doing so, he's creating internal rotation, the hip dropping into a good stretch to bring out a good stretch in the glute. So this is for a difference in side to side hip internal rotation, something like this. He's going to hold for about five to 10 seconds, and then he's going to come up out of it. Now you can do both ranges with this, even if you found just a restriction in hip internal rotation, but just understand that is going to be your emphasis with the hip airplane, understanding context. If you found a difference in hip mobility with the Faber test, so we have an issue in externally rotating and extending, we're going to emphasize the other way of doing the hip airplane. You're going to open the pelvis as far as you can until you feel a good stretch in your groin. Now, the important part with this is making sure the knee does not move. So come back down, Darren. If when he opened his pelvis, he let his knee sort of cave in a little bit, it decreases how much flexibility we're actually creating at the groin. So we're not getting as much lengthening of the groin muscles. So my cue for him is to keep his knee here. He can even squeeze his glute a little bit. And sometimes I'll even have people take this hand and just place it on the inside of the knee so it doesn't move. Then open the pelvis as far as possible. Do you feel a good groin stretch with that? So this is again, something you're gonna hold for five to 10 seconds and then come back down. So the assisted hip airplane opening for the purpose of improving hip external rotation and extension for the person that has a difference in side to side hip mobility that we found with the Faber test. So that is the mobility emphasis with hip airplane. Now comes the stability emphasis, because again, this is such a great exercise because we can progress it to different means based on what we're looking for. Now, how do we screen for stability? The most simple way is just to have someone do a single leg squat. So Darren, I'm going to have you do a single leg squat. Let's face, Evan, let's do one on one side, as deep as you can without falling over. What I'm looking for is his level of knee control, how much he's bouncing around, come back up. Now, let's say, obviously Darren knows how to perform a good quality squat. Let's say he goes down into a single leg squat and we see that move, that knee move around a lot. So if you squatted down and that knee ducked in a lot, so that dreaded knee valgus, that shows us that his level of hip control is actually the point of emphasis that we're gonna be working on. So the single leg squat as a screening tool for hip control is a great, great way to understand what we need to do next. What we're gonna do is come over here. You are going to perform the hip airplane unassisted to work on hip control. And this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna get down into that same single leg RDL position and then make your moves. Now to start, you're just gonna do very small moves. Let's say you don't go all the way over yet. From here, imagine that you're going to pick your pelvis up just about two inches, pause, come back down, pause. Drop the pelvis, pause, come back up, pause. As you feel more confident, go further in your rotations. So you can get here, you can go all the way up as far as you can. Notice that my arms are twisting with my pelvis, I'm not leading with my arms. Come down and back up. All the motion takes place across the hips. This is the movement I first learned from Dr. Stuart McGill, and the way he would explain it is it's teaching you how to steer your strength about your hips. So your emphasis is in the lateral hip during this motion. So here, we're opening and we're closing. Now when we're opening, this muscle is shortening to control the opening, and then when you get here, we're eccentrically lengthening. So the glute medius is lengthening under tension, especially as I drop down, I may feel a light stretch in my lateral hip and then come back up. My emphasis when I'm doing this is also on the foot, make sure I'm spreading my foot, creating that good arch, making sure that I'm not wobbling around. Another big thing to point out is not to think of this as something you wanna move excessively with your arms. I've seen a lot of people try to mimic the hip airplane and this is what it looks like as they really swing their arms open and swing their arms closed. That takes the emphasis away from the hip. If you want to, you can even have your arms in close. 
but don't cheat the drill by moving excessively with your arms. The arms are only there for balance assistance. All your motion takes place across the hips and the torso, and then the arms are just an extension of the movements that's taking place. Something like this, if you do 10 reps, you're gonna feel this really good in the outside of the hips. That's what we're looking for. From here, what you can do is progress up to using a band. We're just gonna take a light band. Here's a Rogue Fitness, about an inch diameter band, and you're gonna put it just around the inside of the knee. Now from here, you're gonna get a little bit of tension on, not too much that it causes you to completely roll on the side. But from here, you're going to perform the exact same motion. Now, the idea is that the band is challenging my ability to maintain foot stability and all the way up through the hip, that coordination that I need for perfect control. If the band is doing its job and pulling too far, my entire body falls out to the side. So this is called RNT, reactive neuromuscular training. And it's basically the ability to teach your body how to control itself by pulling it into a movement problem, a movement dysfunction that we don't wanna see. So without a coach saying, keep your big toe down, keep your big toe down, don't fall over, the cue by just adding a little bit of pressure is teaching my body subconsciously how to stay balanced and coordinated by putting in a pull into a bad position, feeding this dysfunction, as some people will say. My body has to react and then maintain control if I wanna stay upright and not fall over. So that is the hip airplane, something like this. You can use as a mobility drill prior to training if you need some uh, increased mobility to maintain a little bit more symmetry. Something like this programming wise, I would do five to 10 reps for five to 10 second holds. Again, retest to make sure that you're on the right path. For someone who just needs a little bit of stability emphasis, this is an excellent warm up to do prior to squats or deadlifts, but if you feel like you don't have time for it, throw them in after, during your cool down, or just during an off day when you're trying to do a little bit of active recovery. It's not a lot of load, and it can give you a lot of ROI, a lot of bang for your buck as an exercise to help you really work on things that you don't often get time to work on with your traditional training because it's in single leg in a high demand in a rotational plane of motion. If you think about it, most of the time our squats, our deadlifts, our cleans, our snatches are in one of two planes of motion, not often in that rotational transverse plane of motion. So this allows us to really hit the hip a little bit differently and expose and clear up a lot of uh, asymmetries and a lot of weak links that some people have that we don't even know are really a big uh, problem sometimes until it becomes too late. So I hope you guys liked today's video on the hip airplane. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Um, please send this video to your friends and family. Let them know about this exercise. It's an excellent drill that I've become a big fan of within the last five years of my career. And it's been very helpful with a lot of athletes. Uh, many of uh, ones that you have seen on this YouTube channel with their own injury transformations. So again, thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. Until next time, guys. Happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have.